In the next set of simulations, we're going to compare the motion of a gas, a liquid, and a solid by looking at a molecular view of each. So here up on the screen, I have the molecular view of a gas. So notice these gray dotted lines. I'll turn them on and turn them off. Those are showing the attractive forces between these molecules of gas. So we call these intermolecular forces, and these are the attractive forces that hold together a substance. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, trace a random atom here. So we can see that this atom, this gas molecule, is really getting around throughout the entire volume of this space. And that's very normal for gases because gases take the shape of their container. Now let's go ahead and compare the motion in a liquid. So once again, those gray lines are representing the attractions. So we can see here that there's much more, uh, the particles are much more dense. Uh, if I trace a random uh, particle, we see that that particle doesn't have as much freedom of motion. It's more confined due to collisions with the particles around it. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the solid. So it's a little hard to see in the simulation, but there are lots of dotted lines between all of these particles. I'm turning them on and off right now so you can see them. So in the solid, notice that the particles are all pretty much staying in place. If I trace a random atom, it's pretty much just going to stay in the same spot. Uh, they're much closer together. We also have them not taking up the entire available space. They're not taking up the total available volume. So again, we have a view of a gas, a liquid, and of a solid.